Okay, so to continue on chapter seven, we're talking now uh, as we as we near the end. We want to deal with uh, what we call station sketches, and then also get into magnetic bearings. Uh, station sketches are key. That's what allows us to to visually see how we can compute bearings based upon angles that we turn at certain locations. So let's go right into an example, so you can see what uh, what we're talking about. And so you can follow these examples and continue to do this uh, this type of stuff for your homework and for your assignments. So let's start off first. So given that I have an azimuth from A to B is uh, 41 degrees 35 minutes. So again, everything you see over here, this is stuff that you're going to be doing, that you need to be writing. Okay, so given this azimuth, at B, so keep in mind now that I'm stationed at B, and I make a back sight to A. So I'm looking back at A, and I make a back sight. And then I turn an angle to the right of 129 degrees 11 minutes to point C. Point C is my point of interest, whatever it may be. So then what I want to figure out is what is my azimuth from B to C, given all that information which we, which we were just given. So let's go through and solve this. So the first thing we need to do is this compute our azimuth from B to A. So as we know what our azimuth of B to A is, we look at it this way. So from A to B we had a forward azimuth of 41.35. Well from B to A we have a back azimuth, so you just add 180 degrees. So now we know exactly what the azimuth is from B to A is 221 degrees 35 minutes. <clears throat> Next thing we have to do then is add the angle right at B to our azimuth of B to A. So we have the 221 degrees 35 minutes. Now we're going to add 129 degrees 11 minutes. So we add those two together and we end up at 350 degrees 46 minutes. So now let's give you another example. Let's use bearings this time instead of azimuth. So given that I have a bearing from D to E of north 9 degrees 14 minutes west. At E, I look back at D, so again, that line from E to D, that is my reference line, that is my back sight. That's where I'm gaining my direction from. So I make a back sight and look back there. Now at E, I turn an angle, angle to the right of 88 degrees, 35 minutes. So now what I want to figure out is what is my bearing from E to F, given, uh, given this information. So the first thing we need to do is compute our bearing from E to D. Always remember that when we start, uh, the only bearing I gave you was from D to E. I gave you this direction. But anytime you're doing any work when you're stationed here at E, you have to know what the bearing is and what your reference line is at E. So the first thing we need to do is compute the bearing from E to D. Obviously this being our reference line right here, this then being the angle that we're looking for. So with bearings, we know those are really simple, that uh, the forward bearing and the back bearing are easily uh, computed. They're the same magnitude, just opposite in direction. So we know we're going south 9 degrees 14 minutes east. So now what we want to do is we want to subtract the magnitude of the bearing of VDD from the angle to the right. So we knew the whole angle to the right of 88 degrees 35 minutes. And that means we need to just take out the 914, which leaves us then a remainder of 79 degrees 21 minutes, which is again measured off of this reference line, which then gives us a final value of 79 degrees 21 minutes. Falls in quadrant 3, so then we know that our bearing is south, 79 degrees 21 minutes west. So these are typical examples I'm going to have you guys start to follow, and I want to make sure that you draw these things and you take care of all this to, to see, to visually see. I don't want you memorizing formulas or, or anything like that, or just steps. I want you to draw it out so you can visually see, in this example here, when you see certain angles, I can see, oh, I need to subtract this one, it gives me my remainder. That's what, uh, that's what I want you to start seeing so you can figure that out for, for any problem that we come across. So let's, uh, let's jump gears now. Let's, uh, let's talk about something else. So compasses. Compasses are awesome. That is one method and way that we can get uh, bearings and azimuths, that we can measure them. 
So before we had transits, before we had theodolites, before we had total station uh, instruments, before all those were invented, everything, directions of lines and angles, were all determined using compasses. <clears throat> so you've seen much, you know, a lot of different examples of what a compass looks like, but easily, you know, helps us to allow to, to gather those bearings based upon where magnetic north is. See here, just some older, older instruments that were used back in the day, but these were good, solid compasses that helped us really, uh, really get what we're looking at. And you can see that the main key about the compass is the needle points along the magnetic meridian, and then wherever you're looking, if you're looking your line of sight this way, then you can measure then whatever your uh, your angle is right there. And it tells you right here, so you look and notice that well, on a compass like this, on, on surveying compasses, you'll see that the E and the West are backwards than a normal compass. Well, and the reason being is because this, you see what our line of sight is? We're headed, we're looking in a northeasterly direction. So that's what we need to read. So as you look on the compass here, based upon which direction you just turned, here's north and there's east, so now you're in the northeast direction of what, uh, what you're reading your compass to be at north 40 degrees east based upon this magnetic meridian. And again this magnetic meridian this is your reference line. We talked previous about different reference lines of true north, of magnetic north, of given north, of any type of thing that you're saying this is your reference. Well we had to have a magnetic meridian then using the uh, you know the poles of the, the earth to be able to tell us exactly where we're at. So magnetic declination is something important we need to understand. Okay, it's the horizontal angle measured from the geodetic meridian to the magnetic meridian. So what really is that saying? So if you look at the, I know that's not a very pretty circle on Earth for you, but it's going to work for us. So if I draw some meridians here, so if you want to look at, if you can uh, kind of tell from that direction, or I can draw you another uh, another view right in here. You can see, okay, you have meridians. Meridians go from the so South Pole to the North Pole, the North Pole to the South Pole. That is the meridian that connects them, and it goes straight up and due north. Okay, so that is that is our true meridian. That is what we call our geodetic meridian. So geodetic and true, that's we're going to call those to be the same. So if you're standing in a point right here, and I'm looking and I want to know true north, or geodetic north from that point, I look along the meridian. So wherever I'm standing, I look right up to the North Pole. The physical axis of the, of the rotation of the Earth to the North Pole. That's what I'm looking for. In this instance here, so here's the North Pole, there's the South Pole. We have to understand that the magnetic poles are different. A magnetic pole, you're going to find, sits out here, and then also sits somewhere down in here. Gives you a whole different pole to the, uh, to the Earth. So what we're looking for, and we talk about this horizontal angle, so if I'm looking along this meridian, I'm looking straight up north, then I also look over here, I have an angle right inside there. That is my declination. <clears throat> so if I'm using a compass, I need to be able to adjust for that so that my angles are measured off of true north. That's what everything we use. We go off of true north. We go off of the, the geodetic north. So we keep everything consistent. So if we're using compasses, we have to make that adjustment. So with the magnetic poles, they're constantly changing. And this is, uh, this is key here. So you have to understand that uh, if the pole is always moving, it's not always in the same spot. So then what you end up with is if the pole moves, say you make a measurement with a compass back in 1920, and now you're going to, say in 1950, make a same type of measurement using a compass again. Now, of course, we don't uh, necessarily do that anymore, but, uh, but it's still an option. So if that being the case, in 1950, when you make a measurement using the compass, the pole is changed. So if the pole has changed its location, then the angle you measure, that angle which you're making your reference line from, also changes. So you're not going to be measuring the same thing. So you have to make adjustments to go back to certain epochs and certain times where you knew what the declination was. So you can 
phys really compared truly what uh, what the true angle really needs to be. So to be able to change that and track that, track those changes, we have what we call isogonic charts. Okay, it gives the, dec the magnetic declinations in a region for any certain epoch that we have. Understand then the definition then for an isogonic line. It connects areas that all have the same declination. And an agonic line is a mag uh, where the magnetic uh, north is equal to the geodetic north, which is true north.